Hi right there guys and welcome to another Trains in 2018 video. You joined me at a bit of a different, I'm, I'm already already running, which is quite strange. It's just because I started off at Tiverton Parkway and uh, it isn't scenery between there and here. So I started recording when we got to the scenery section. So this is Devon Rails version 5. Um, it's currently still a work in progress, but this being version 5, we have got the most up-to-date version of the route possible. And we are on our way down to Penzance at the minute, in this wonderful beast, that a lot of people don't like. If you don't like it, you don't like it. I, they, they are sort of the way forward. I'm not a massive fan of them, but it's relatively nice driving train sim. It looks half decent, so I'm quite excited to be doing it, really. And I haven't done a video in it since the... Was it the... 801 or whatever it was. I still don't know the numbers fully for these ones. Um, IETs is what I will refer to them as until I get the blurb up to tell me what we're doing. So Devon Rails version 5. So Devon Rails is based on and greatly extends DTG's Riviera line. Version 5 includes new scenery and detail from Plymouth to Salt Ash and Gunnis Lake. The route will continue to be updated regularly. At the moment there is detailed scenery for Exeter to Plymouth, uh, Exmouth, uh, Honington and Meldon Quarry, Plymouth to Salt Ash and Gunnis Lake. Oh, hang on, are we actually? I think we're going to Plymouth, not Penzance. It's Plymouth we're going to. Sorry, not Penzance. That was me dreaming. Um, there's partial scenery for Cowley Bridge Junction to Tiverton Parkway and line signalling and stations only for Honington to Ax A A Axminster, Colford Junction, Barnstable, and Tiverton Parkway and Bristol Temple Meads. It says here, we'll steadily fill in the missing detail and new route features over time and also add the South Devon Railway and the Paynton to Dartmouth Railway. So, it's one of those routes that, that's out for train simulator that they're constantly working on, which I really like, and they're actually very fast. Um, version 4 to version 5 put in some really decent extras, so I expect version 5... To version 5.5, version 6, or 5.1, or whatever they go to, to include more extras as well. So it's slowing down to 80. Getting ready to stop at Exeter St David's. The main route requirements um, from Steam are Brighton Mainline, European Loco and Asset Pack, Platform Cut Scenery Pack, Town Scenery Pack, Riviera Line, Riviera Line, the 50s, North Somerset Railway, West Coast Mainline, North and West Somerset Railway. The bits you'll need from Just Trains are the Bristol to Exeter and the Western Main Lines. DP Simulation, you need the Barnstable to Exeter, which I don't have installed. Uh, that's my bad. I should have had that installed before I did this, but I didn't have time to get it sorted. Um, UK Train Sim, there is a fair list. There is the Haddock 1000 Bridge Kit. Uh, then there's the JAD Home Chain Link Fencing, JAD Metal Palisade Fencing. And I'm just going to slow down so I actually break on time here. Uh, JAD signs pack 2 and 3 JS loot level crossing uh, the banks and cuttings LSWR trestle pack the list is pretty extent, uh, extensive so go and have a look um, it's available on train some designs at code UK and that's linked in my description below it's high speed tracks are the designers which I'm really, really pleased about. And UK route designs do a lot of the scenarios and stuff for it on top of that. It's a great route. It really is a great route. And I'm quite looking forward to doing this running it, really. Should be about an hour, just over an hour, I think. So not too long. And here we are coming into Exeter St. David. So you'll notice that there's a big difference over the DTG one. The detail in this is phenomenal at points. Sorry about the bad horn, folks. That's uh, We can bl all blame Super Elves for that. Oh, 
Oh, it's my little Scott Rail man. How you doing, mate? Oh, you got your twin with you today. He's a bit rude. He never actually looks at me, though. Every time I try and talk to him, he's always looking away. I'd love to know if that guy actually still does work up at Queen Street. Right, let's get our doors open, load up here at Exit St. David's. You right, mate? No? Still not talking to me today? Nah. It's always that, he's grumpy. Right, as we're running a bit late there, we have not got a big stop there, so let's get straight out of here. Scenery detail is amazingly done. Look at the allotments, the gardens. You know what I'm like with my allotments, but these ones are pretty extra. <laughs> I mean, look at the detail in them. Cracking, absolutely cracking. Nice little place to have an allotment, really, wouldn't it? Plenty of trains to watch as well. So this bit of the route is the DTG Riviera lines, um, with it all being modified as well. It's been upgraded and fiddled with and scenery added. And you can tell. So with the whistle board, just because the horn's so poor on this, I'm not going to be doing the horn, because you end up with that. And I think I'd rather go without.
I've actually just done a video in the 395 and uh, Hitachi cabs are growing on me more and more. I really do like the black. Uh, the bit I'm not too keen on is the power handle bit. That's very Japanese anyway. That's what you'd kind of expect from them. Oh, I've opened that front again. Oh, it's loud in here. Very loud. Thankfully, it's not that loud up here. This is actually uses the 170 uh, sounds as well, the original 170 sounds, which is why it's pretty deafening. So yes, this scenario comes with the route, but you'll start up at uh, Tibbs and Parkway. Um, I just started it a little bit, a little bit earlier, a little bit later. Sorry. Just so it's more interesting for you guys, really, more than anything. I was looking for something to show off, but a lot of it, because of the stock this tends to use, is a lot of the stock I usually drive, uh, be it 150s, uh, 153s, HSTs. So, the reason I did this scenario is because it has the 800 in it. very pretty mm, made boy up there look on the balcony having a look like that it's these little touches in these routes you know I'm not going to keep going on about it because you know what it's like cars and driveways proper fences lovely and even look at that Nice bit of sunken boat out there. Poor little Clyde Puffer, look. One of my own personal screenshots there. I won't, I won't use that for the thumbnail because people will go, what? What is that? detail on the road and everything's beautiful so double yellow we'll just continue along at this speed then I won't go increasing remember that some of the areas you'll see along this route will be due to my end it won't be the route itself It's not red. OK, 
Look at that, look. Might just have to get the screeny here, though. Following something along the seawall by the looks of it. Wonder what's ahead of us. Oh, yeah. Two Tango Zero Six. Let's pull up to that light. Might just be able to see it actually. would be a pacer, wouldn't it? And we're not actually due to stop at Dawlish. Yeah, so we're going to be following that for a while, I think. Maybe not. Maybe Newton Abbott, it might pull off and let us past. If the Bobby's being nice, that is. and remember the acceleration of a of a pacer isn't going to be anywhere near as good as us is it I'm guessing it should be a bit further ahead of us now though I'm risking it, I'm risking it, yeah, clear. Oh, 
That one's at red. It does look so much better than the DTG version. Just a little bit more animation, there's a little bit more static about, which does make a difference. Hopefully this signal's cleared by the time we get through here. Yeah, it looks yellow. I think there's many routes, I'll take as many screenshots on. Oh, bit of Just Trains ton of work going on there. Somebody actually came up with why that happens the other day, and I can't remember how why it was. Still pretty clearly red. See if we can roll up to it and get out of there on a yellow, that would be very nice. Without having to actually pull away from a standing stop. But it isn't looking promising. That was mine. There it goes. So, yeah, we should get that out of our way at Newton Abbott, really. Before we head off. Oh, by the way, route map. Huge. Huge. I was going to say, come on. Let's go and ring the bobby on the SBT. He said we could go. Yeah, we definitely can. Not for long, though, because we've got another signal coming up after this. Not far.
and that one's approved as well. There might be a little signaling error going on here. Off tracks, mate. Albie introduced me to a lovely little feature that I'm not quite sure if I like to use yet or not, and it's called Async Keys. And this basically means that I can speed up or slow down the simulation. Um, so for video and purposes, it's actually quite nice. It means that, like, I speeded up the first part of this, so I can, like, go, like, if I do five, you see, I can do that and speed everything up. I'm not going to link it. If you want to look it up, you may. Um, but I'm not going to go out telling you how to do it, because I'm not sure how... Call me sceptical. I've got a sneaking suspicion it messes up with uh, scenarios. And I think that might be the issue I'm having here. But I don't know. It might not be. It's just one of those things I don't like fiddling with. But you can just go like two times. So that's double speed. Three times, four times, five times. And then back to one. A bit like in flight sim you used to be able to do the same thing. You could like drop down and have... Uh, you go up to like 64 speed or something in flight sim, couldn't you? So the Class 800, the Super Express, is a type of electro-diesel train used in the United Kingdom based on the Hitachi A-Train design. They've been built by Hitachi since 2015. The first units enter service on the Great Western Main Line in October 2017, will enter service on the East Coast Main Line from December 2018. Yep, I'll believe that when I see it. These trains are being assembled at the Hitachi uh, Newton Ircliffe facility alongside the related Class 801 electrical multiple units from body shelves shipped from the Casado plant in Japan. No body construction takes place in the UK. So that's fine. The bodies aren't built in the UK, but the whole things are put together in the UK. Um, while I'm on this point, can I just remind people this bring back British trains, everything should be British mentality. Um, there are no British manufacturers uh, that have any build space left. So a lot of these trains couldn't have been built. Same as the Mark Fives and all that sort of jazz. There isn't any space. There isn't any factory space to build them. They're all full. All British manufacturers, are, order books are full. So we are building British, but we need more than we can supply. And that is because we decimated our production years and years ago. It was very short-sighted. Completely agree, but that's not bring back British. That's not the EU's fault. It's none of that's fault. That's uh, a certain lady prime minister we had. That did an awful lot of that to us. But anyway, 
The Class 800 trains are known as IETs, which is Intercity Express trains, as part of the Intercity Express program, which was the IEP, which is the whole overlying program. They have been named Azuma, meaning East in Japanese for Virgin Trains East Coast. Not that they'll probably ever actually run these. Maybe, maybe not. We don't know yet. I'm going via Newton now, but I'm not actually stopping there, guys. <laughs> As part of the UK government's Intercity Express programme, the Class 800 units are to be partial replacements for the ageing Intercity 125 trains, which currently operate on the Great Western Main Line and the East Coast Main Line. The Class 800s are a mixture of electric and electro diesel multiple units, with the electro diesel ones being able to draw power from electrified overhead lines where available to power themselves via, or power themselves via an underfloor diesel generator when outside of the electrified network. The train specification requires that the changeover can occur at line speed. Units built for the East Coast main, main Line will primarily be electric, while all units built for the Great Western Main Line will be electro diesel, with the possibility to be converted to electric only operation by removal of the diesel engines. Uh, the Class 800s are di uh, capable of driver only operation when necessary, Ugh. but guards have to be kept on the units. Door release will be controlled by the drivers with the guard being responsible for closing them using the control panels in the vestibule areas. The driver will carry out a secondary track uh, speed in. I was thinking I was dawdling along. So they carry out a secondary track over the side of the train before departure using in cab CCTV monitors, which will be here. Notice that flashing uh, ATP light there. Just shows that we're going down to a 55 limit. This is a fair old climb here, though. There is actually a scenario I want to do uh, for the channel on this route and this bit stretch. It's a uh, cross country HST with a single power car. One power car's failed, and you've got to kind of get it from uh, Newton Abbott and up this, this gradient. It's a fair job. It's not easy, but this will take it ease, at ease, absolute ease. So we're stopping at Totnes and then Plymouth in about 30 miles. I've not been down to Plymouth yet on this. Kind of looking forward to it. Pretty to watch, isn't it?
Just get it over the hump, and then I'll just cut power and let it coast down. Probably adding some brake along the way. So there's a total of 80 train sets will be constructed with 36 5 car and 21 9 car units intended for operation with GWR plus 10 5 car and 13 9 car with Virgin Trains East Coast. Ah yes, the introduction to service bit it has here. This is quite interesting. The class 800 trains came into service in the Great Western Main Line on October the 16th, 2017. Teething problems surfaced on the inaugural service with a train running late and the air conditioning unit discharging water into a carriage. Following th further problems, the units were withdrawn from service for one day on October the 19th and re-entered service on the next day, which would have been October the 20th. The units went to service on the East Coast Main Line from December 2018. I'm not sure that's going to happen. Um, just with the way the franchise is going and everything like that, and as much as the DFD pushing these, I just don't see it happening dead on. Really don't. And considering it's December these are going in, no, as far as I'm aware, now this may have changed, my information may be slightly out of date, um, but none of the VTEC guards have been trained on them. Don't know about drivers, but guards definitely haven't even been shown them or told much about them, Any, and no more than we know. But as I said, that could have changed. fainter seats than these. These are inboard seats on trains. They're getting a bit of press now. Uh, Super Elves that created this has a massive issue and so do a lot of people of these inboard seats in trains. I do as well. The 387s are one of the most uncomfortable trains I've ever been on in my life. Um, not only is the ride awful but also the seats that you're sitting on are awful. It's now come to the attention of the RSSB who are now saying there needs to be a proper scientific study into uh, seat ergonomics which I quite like there should be some basic standard for passenger seating in trains without a doubt oh what are you up to in the field with those sheep, guys? When we get to Totnes, I'll uh, be quiet for about 30 seconds, hopefully. What time are we due in? At 37, we're going to get in about 35. So, yeah, for about a minute, I will be quiet while I just saw some bits out behind my head that are uh, doing my head in a little bit for the rest of the journey down to Plymouth.
I do love this bit of this route. We probably should have moved up to the HST board, but uh, I am just going to mute this mic for a second and I'll be back just before we leave, probably. So sit and enjoy the view. In fact, let me give you something pretty to look at. You can have some nice bird song. Okay, and that's us ready to depart for Plymouth. Twenty two miles. And this is where high speed tracks just just match up with the likes of DP simulations and all of that. Uh, Vulcan Productions for their, their route making little details. I don't know why I did that. I watched my speed <laughs> increase to overspeed there. <laughs> I literally watched it happen. It's not a fair gradient out there, though. It's 
because isn't the easiest to drive. The amount of animals on this route as well is lovely. A lot of the times animals are missed out of fields and things on, on train sim. And they are a massive part of our countryside, don't they? If you go on a train, you're guaranteed to see something in a field somewhere. What is it when cows lie down? Is it supposed to rain? Pretty sure, isn't it? It's been a nice route to learn properly because the gradients are pretty good. You've got some nice steep ascents and descents uh, all over this route, actually. this scenario should finish just on time for me to go and get my kids from school and go and play in the snow which is what I'm looking forward to the beast from the east hasn't really been much of a beast for us in Cambridge but there is enough snow to play about in How's the snow for you guys? Did you all get snow? If you did, put down roughly where you are and, and how much you got. I know Scotland's absolutely covered at the moment. My family keep putting up pictures just to taunt me. I'm a big fan of the snow. I love it. Nice tunnel entrance there as well, I like that. West Country.
and we've made it in train simulator down to the, the, the border between Devon and Cornwall which I think is very cool. I think part of this route already does go into Cornwall but I don't know if it's scenery yet. We'll have a little look when we get to Plymouth. Plymouth also has the largest operational naval base in Western Europe, which I think is a pretty cool thing. HMNB at Devonport. Seven Type 23 frigates based there. There's HMS Ocean, HMS Albion, HMS Bulwark, which are all the amphibious landing ships. Type 23 frigates, there are seven of. So that's Argyle, Monmouth, Montrose, Northumberland, Portland, Somerset and Sutherland. Um, Trafalgar class submarines, but they're not. their subflot, aren't they, south now, which is uh, Trenchant, Talent and Triumph. And then there's the Surveying Squadron which is Echo, Enterprise, uh, Gleaner and Scott. The Antarctic Patrol Ship, HMS Protector. And then there is an Archer Class Patrol vessel, vessel, which is Dasher. Now, the Archer Class is um, one of my favourite naval ships. Is it a ship or a boat? It's still a boat, I'd think, more than a ship. FTBs or fast training boats. And they're the same as the Omani Coast Guard cutters. They do have sort of a seven sort of seven class lifeboat look to them as well. Not the same sort of hull. But they're pretty rapid things. I've seen them quite a lot when I've been out and about. It's like the whole is fit is designed for like forty five knots because the engine fitted. I think they've got a max speed of about twenty years at twenty five. I'd need to look it up. Sixty mile an hour all this bit. It does feel like it really wants to stretch its legs. It doesn't really like holding sixty. Especially on all these gradients. But you can see why it's not any faster than the amount of turns and twists this thing has. That's a pretty view.
just lovely scenery. Very, very green. Oh, we can go up to 80. Oh, thank God for that. That is pretty stunning, isn't it? Oh, what's in that field? A horse! Some tractors over there. Really nicely done. It's a fair descent here anyway, so hopefully we might not even need to put any power on for it to do 80. <coughs> I'd be surprised if we did. And the nice link about Plymouth Type 23 frigates and the railways is that Type 23 frigates have an engine that we are all pretty familiar with by now, and that is the Paxman Valenta. There are four of them. They use diesel generators, just like they are on trains, really. And then they uh, convert down to two electric motors. And then they also have two Rolls Royce Spay <laughs> engines as well. <laughs> they can give 31,000 horsepower, shaft horsepower. And the Spay, of course, famously used on the BAC 111s. And F4 Phantoms, the Buccaneers. us on our approaches into Plymouth now. Start getting more built up. I've never actually been to Plymouth by train, so I'm not sure how accurate this bit is. You guys will be able to tell me what it looks like.
Ho. It's been reliably informed. I've no windows in the shed, but my wife has just messaged me to say that the snow has just got a load heavier. So I'm a little bit excited. Slowing down a bit early there, I was thinking, oh, maybe it's closer. Well, there is one little patch over us now, according to the live weather radar, that should be giving us quite a bit of snow, so that's quite nice. It won't last, though. And this is Plymouth. Excellent, looks good. How far do we get? We can go further, a lot further on. So yeah, Plymouth's looking good. And it says we've successfully completed that scenario. All right then, guys. Thank you ever so much for joining me. And after all those beautiful screenshots, I think I'm going to end up with something pretty boring. Um, I will catch you guys next time. Please do feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And check out the Facebook group. Check out Twitch. I'll catch you there. See you later.